It's time for another Brawlympics! Okay guys, it's been a very long time since the very first ever Brawl Stars Olympics video was created where I compared the ranges of every single brawler in the game. Seriously though, it's like almost been an entire year. Now since then, we've had a ton of balance changes, several new brawlers have been added into the game, and I've actually discovered some more interesting facts about the ranges of the brawlers. So for today's event, we're going to be putting all of the brawlers against each other in a competition to see who has the longest range in the game. Now, brawlers are going to be allowed to use whatever means necessary for them to get the longest range possible. They can use their attack, their super, even their star power if it will help them out. They can even use walls or an enemy opponent. Now, here's how this is going to work for this event. Each brawler must be positioned right next to this wall so that the ruler can be used to accurately measure their ranges. You should also note that because the brawler is actually right next to the wall rather than in the center of the tile that's right next to the wall, I also had to slide the ruler to the left just a little bit for the sake of accuracy. You should also know that I compared all of the rangers measured with the ruler to the actual ranges listed into the game and there's actually a lot of inconsistencies between what the ruler shows and the game files so I made sure to test each brawler's effective range as well. This means that the ranges in today's event will be the actual range required for a brawler to hit a target. Now to make things interesting I'll be putting the brawlers into groups of five and you'll be given an option to choose which of those five you think has the longest range. Every time you're right you get a point point. and if you get all of them right then well you win well well, like, uh, I, I guess you win an internet high five from, from me. <laughs> to start off, which of the brawlers do you think will win out of Nita, Daryl, Frank, Shelly, or Rosa? Don't forget that they can use their supers to compete as well. If you guessed that Rosa would have won, you may have forgotten that her super does not give her any additional range at all. She comes in dead last with an attack range of three and two thirds tiles, and following her is Nita, who throws out her bear at four and two thirds tiles, and it has a radius of one and one thirds tiles, which comes up to six tiles. However, Nita's regular attack actually has a range of six and one third tiles, which doesn't really help her very much either. I guess the real question is, is Nita 24th or is she actually first because her bear has infinite potential range. Next we have actually a three-way tie for 21st place, so if you pick Shelly, Daryl, or Frank, then you get a point. Now both Shelly's super and attacks have an effective range of seven and one-thirds tiles. Daryl's attack only reaches five and two-thirds tiles, but his super actually reaches seven and one-thirds tiles. One thing you'll notice, however, is that his super range looks like it's seven and two-thirds tiles, but it actually won't deal damage to a target that far away, so that extra one-third tile does not count for Daryl. Frank's regular regular attack has a range of six tiles, but his super has a range of seven and one thirds tiles. Once again, tying him with Daryl and Shelly for 21st place. Up next is a competition between Leon, Piper, Pam, Dynamite, and Carl. Who do you think will win out of these brawlers? Well, Carl certainly is not the winner. His super only has a radius of two and one thirds tiles, and his regular attack reaches a range of eight tiles, placing him in 20th place. Pam takes 19th place with some interesting inconsistencies. It's really strange here. Now she can throw out her turret four and two thirds tiles. That's the same throw range as all of the turret throwers actually. And it actually has a radius of four tiles. However, if you actually pay close attention to the actual range of the turret, the outer ring reaches two thirds tiles further than the effective range, giving her super a total range of eight and two thirds tiles. Also, it looks like her attack only reaches eight and two thirds tiles, but the projectile actually reaches one third tiles further than her aiming white flashlight would suggest. That's right, Lady Kairos. In honor of you, I called it a flashlight. For those of you guys that haven't watched Lady Kairos play Brawl Stars, first of all, it's hilarious. Second of all, I'm talking about the white aiming reticule thing that's on the ground. Dynamite's regular attack has a range of seven with a radius of two tiles, and his super has a range of seven with a radius of two and two thirds tiles, giving him a total range of nine and two thirds tiles, placing him in 17th place where he actually ties with Leon. Now, Leon does not get any help from his super, but his attack has a range of nine and two thirds tiles. All that being said, said if you guessed that Piper was going to be the best in her group then you are correct she does take that victory landing in 16th place her super has a range of eight and two thirds tiles but her regular attack has one of the longest regular attacks in the game of 10 tiles up next is a really close matchup between Mortis, Terra, Poco, Colt, and Jean I'll give you a quick moment to 
Make your guess. Terra and Poco tie for 14th place, both with a range of 10 and 1 thirds tiles because of their supers. Now, if you did have to pick a winner between the two, I guess you could go with Terra though, uh, because Poco's regular attack range is seven tiles, while Terra's is eight tiles. Next, we have a three-way tie for Colt, Mortis, and Jean, all at 11 tiles. Now, Colt simply has an attack range of nine tiles with a super range of 11 tiles, and Mortis's attack range looks like three tiles, but his effective range is actually one third tile shorter, but his super does actually reach a range of 11 tiles. And of course, the first part of Gene's regular attack reaches five and two thirds tiles, but after that, it splits into tiny little flames that fly out an additional five and one thirds tiles, giving his super attack range a total of 11 tiles. Once again, as long as you picked Colt, Mortis, or Gene, you get a point. Next is a matchup between Bull, Bo, El Primo, Spike, and Brock. You're not gonna be getting any more easy points from those ties though, so guess carefully, guys. That said, there's still another tie for ninth place between Bull and El Primo. Now, Bull's regular attack only reaches a range of five tiles, but his super has an effective range of 11 and one third tiles. This is despite the fact that it actually looks like it has a range of 11 and two thirds tiles. El Primo's regular attack only has a range of three tiles, but he's able to jump eight and two thirds tiles and land with a radius of two and two thirds tiles, bringing his total range to 11 and one thirds tiles. Now, up next is Brock. Brock's regular attack looks like it has a range of 10 tiles, just like Piper's, but it actually explodes once it reaches that max range, and that little explosion adds one third tiles to his range, giving him an effective range of 10 and one thirds tiles. Now, while that might be impressive, Brock's super actually reaches even longer. Now, the yellow area that shows where his super will land is actually very misleading. It's one of the only attacks that looks like it's not divisible by one third tiles. It looks like it's half of tiles which is weird, uh, but even then, because of the firing pattern of his rockets and some of the randomness uh, regarding where those rockets actually may land, his super may reach further or shorter than it actually appears. Now, after a lot of testing, I was able to determine that his super has a maximum range potential of 11 and two thirds tiles. This actually ties him with Spike for seventh place. Now, Spike's super isn't anything really impressive. It has a range of seven and one thirds tiles and a radius of two and one thirds tiles reaching a total range of nine and two thirds tiles. However, if you throw his attack out perfectly, his regular attack reaches a range of seven and two thirds tiles and then explodes out with an additional radius of four tiles, bringing his range up to 11 and two thirds tiles. And what's impressive about this is the fact that his regular attack has the longest range, aside from a few other brawlers that require specific requirements to be met in order for them to actually reach that maximum range. But before we get into that, let's talk about Bo, who actually takes sixth place as the winner of his group. Now, Bo's regular attack has an attack that looks like it will reach uh, eight and one third tiles, but the explosion for his arrow actually gives an additional one third tiles of range, giving him a very long effective range with his regular attack of eight and two thirds tiles. That said, if conditions are right, Bo's super has the potential to reach even further. He can throw it out eight and one thirds tiles and the bomb can land anywhere within a two and one third tile range. After that, if somebody detonates a bomb, that bomb has an explosion radius of an additional two and one thirds tiles. In total, this gives Bo's super a potential range of 13 tiles. Now granted, somebody has to be close to the mine in order for it to like activate, but it can still do damage that far away. So it does absolutely count. Okay guys, we are down to the final five, the best five brawlers when it comes to their range. And it is a competition between Rico, Jesse, Crow, Barley, and Penny. Now I'll make you a deal here, okay? Not only can you get a point for guessing the number one brawler, but I'll also give you a bonus point if you can guess which brawler gets second and which brawler gets third. But you have to guess the order right in order for you to get those extra points. You ready? Here we go. Coming in fifth place is Barley. For Barley's regular attack, he throws out his bottle seven tiles out and it has a splash radius of two tiles reaching nine tiles in total. But for his super, he throws out his bottles around the center of a nine tile range. And even though his aiming circle shows a four and one third tile radius, due to some randomness of where they actually land, his attack can actually reach a radius of five 
tiles, giving him a total possible range of 14 tiles in total. Up next, coming in fourth place is Rico. Rico's regular attack is normally nine and two thirds tiles, but if you angle it right off of the wall, it extends an additional one and one thirds tiles, giving his attack a possible range of 11 tiles. Now, super functions very similarly with a normal range of 13 and one third tiles, but with a range of 14 and two thirds tiles when bouncing it off of a wall. Now, if you guessed that Crow would get third place, you get a bonus point. Crow's regular attack has a, a range that looks like it reaches out eight tiles, but the daggers actually extend out one third tile further, giving him an effective range of eight and one third tiles. But with his super, Crow jumps out eight and two thirds tiles and his feathers fly out an additional eight and one thirds tiles. This brings his total range up to a whopping 17 tiles, which is just crazy. <laughs> if you guess Penny was going to get second, you get Another bonus point. Now Penny's regular attack only reaches nine tiles, but if she happens to hit an enemy target at the very end of her range, her attack will split out with an additional five tiles, giving her a total attack range of 14 tiles, which is really impressive. But she's not done yet. Penny's turret has a massively long range. It requires 12 and one third tile in order for it to actually like fire off an attack, but it lands at a 13 tile center mark with an explosion radius of one and one third tiles, giving her turret a total range of 14 and one third tiles. And to add to that, Penny also has a throw range of four and two thirds tiles, which means that her super comes to an insanely long 19 tile range. Oh my gosh, but up next, we have the number one brawler, guys. Do you remember who is remaining? Well, if you happen to guess that Jessie would win this entire thing, you are correct. For her super, Jessie can throw out her turret four and two thirds tiles, and her turret has a range of eight and two thirds tiles, giving her an effective range with her super of 13 tiles. But what is even more impressive is her attack range. Alone, it reaches a range of nine tiles, but if a target happens to be at that range, then the attack will continue bouncing another six and one third tiles. Then, if another target is at that perfect spot, it will bounce another six and one third tiles, bringing Jesse's total potential range to 21 and two third tiles, which is absolutely crazy. Now the only brawler in the history of Brawl Stars to ever have a longer range than that was Daryl back when he used to be able to roll 23 and, and two thirds tiles, which was, was kind of fun, but it was also kind of broken and highest. How many points did you get out of the seven total possible points? And which ones did you get wrong? If you happen to get all seven correct, guys, here's your internet high five from me. Go ahead and drop a comment in the section below letting me know which of the Brawlympics events you would like me to actually update for a future video. And then of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it and turn on that notification bell because that would be unfortunate. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.